Hey guys, it's Phoebe from Who's Phoebe and welcome back to another Doctor Who video. Now today's Doctor Who video is a companion files. As you know, my old routine was companion files review, companion files review again. Now I'm only doing these up until we get news of the Centenary Special out. And then after that, it'll be all Centenary Special content. So you better get used to these videos before Centenary Special comes out because you know I will do it. So today's Companion Files is on Sarah, King Sarah Kingdom, as you know. So, main aliases, Sarah Taylor, Species Human Job, Space Security Service, Planet of Origin, Earth. Sarah Kingdom was a companion of the First Doctor, a member of the Space Security Service. Sarah had already foiled an attempted Dalek invasion on Earth prior to meeting the Doctor. However, she killed her own brothers on orders of the Guardians of the Solar System, Maverick Chen, who she later turned against, having learned that he had sided with the Daleks. She joined the Doctor and Stephen Taylor in their travels and helped them with an emerald of, of Terralumium from the Daleks whilst they were succeeding in the defeating of the Daleks. It was at the expense of Sarah's life. Childhood. Sarah was born to Maverick Kingdom in the fourteenth in the fortieth century, so like way, way after like the whole of the twentieth century and the whole of the thirtieth century on Earth. She had a sister named L Layla Kingdom and two brothers named David Kingdom and Brett Vaughn. According to one account, Sarah joined the Space Security Service at the age of seven. SSS career. According to another account, Sarah joined the service soon after her 21st birthday when she was chosen by Colonel Mark Forrest and computer as an agent in charge of the Space Security Service field operations. To join the organisation, she had to sacrifice her capacity to have children. Both of her brothers also later joined. That seems a bit brutal in my opinion. Sacrificing having children. For her first mission, Sarah was sent to diverse the plans of Golden Dalek from Earth to Brasilia. By spreading news of its golden mines amongst Dalek species, she was successful and the Dalek forces were alienated and an achievement for which she was praised. Early in her career, she was sent on a mission with fellow brother David, who was kidnapped by the Daleks. Apologies for the lighting change, if it keeps going from light to dark. I can't really do anything about that. It's the last day of summer. The light's going to be all over the place. Sarah was sent to Varnon to rescue the kidnapped Professor Lombo and thus keep the secret of the formula of the new metal from the Daleks, who could use it for new outcasting which would make them unstoppable. She, see she sneaked into the Dalek slave camps, found the professor and helped him give the Daleks the wrong formula, causing an explosion and fo foiled the Daleks' plan. So even without the Daleks, she still knew about them, which is interesting. Charged with investigation, investigating the leak of combined information jeopardizing the security of Earth status basis, Sarah discovered that the upgraded Golden Empire was able to read thoughts through radio waves. She used her scientists as bait whilst human forces attacked and wiped out the Dalek fleet, thus foiling the short-lived Dalek invasion. Mark Stevens wrote a file about a mission with Maverick Chen, consulting when he and Brett Vaughn unexpectedly met the future version of Sarah in 3000... 3999 and she was supposed to be stationed on Venus. As a result of her older self's action, Sarah received a surprise promotion and was reassigned to Earth. Weird. See, the lightning's gone dark again. Like I said guys, nothing I can do about that. A year later, in 40,000, Chen told meeting the Charles and the Tardis meeting the Doctor. Chen told Sarah that Brett was a traitor and was sent to stop him. The first Doctor and Stephen Taylor. She was shot and killed her brother. 
but was prevented from killing the other two when, when the three of them were accidentally transferred to minor by cellular transportation. There she, there she learned that her unqu unquestioned obedience had not only led her to unjustly kill her brother, but had prevented him from warning Earth of a Dalek plot. Deciding to help the Doctor and Stephen, she travelled to Kumbel with them and saw for herself that Chen had alienated himself with the Daleks, replacing the Urm of Titanium with a fake. The three left the TARDIS with the power source to keep it away from Chen on the run. Sarah's adventures in the TARDIS were to Liverpool on Christmas Day 1965 and Hollywood in 1921. While celebrating Christmas aboard the TARDIS, they smashed into an experimental space-time vessel and after Natalie Lang attempted to pilot the TARDIS, Sarah was knocked unconscious and experienced a delusion in which she was at Brent's birthday party. She knew it was fake but was unable to resist. After her crew awoke, the TARDIS landed on the various Christmases when they found well, they found to be due to, to a boy named Robert. They took him to Mars where he died in Sarah's arms. Like I said, Christmas for the Doctor doesn't always go to plan. You've, if you guys have seen the Christmas specials, you know that the Doctor's um, Christmases never go the right way. In 1399, she met Brett and destroyed the Great Clock after it attacked her mind, unwittingly causing the power crisis that led Chen to make his deal with the Daleks. She brought about her own promotion and posting to Earth. She helped to rescue miners on the asteroid with a settlement Silver Sea and visited a house in Ely where she left a copy of her mind to save the Doctor Stephen and the TARDIS. They also visited 19, six, 1916 where they found the Battle of Song was a, month, was a month overdue and the time was compensating for those who were meant to die. Sarah and Stephen lived a normal life in the 1950s London for two weeks after the Doctor fell into a coma, thanks to anomaly challenging and disappearing. That they befriended Joseph Roberts, whose whose niece Andrew Newman helped Sarah adjust to living in the past, and she attempted unsuccessfully to get a job at the police station after Stephen was fired from the docks. She looked after Aubrey's daughter Rosetta and protected her from challengers, who who she managed to kill before leaving. She promised that she would not let Stephen forget what had happened there despite his memory loss. Instead of landing on Cabell, the Doctor, indeed, the Doctor intended the TARDIS landed in Solver Asteroid Belt where they encountered the Sontarans and a group of SSS agents whom Sarah knew from future knowledge would not survive. She helped them fight the Sontarans and was tortured by the sleep to get the Doctor to open the TARDIS. Once the Sontarans were defeated, the travellers left the TARDIS which defeated an unidentified time machine following them, leading them to return once more to the struggle against the Daleks. The, tar the TARDIS landed on Titanus along alongside the other time machine which they found to belong to the monk. The monk followed them to Egypt and took Sarah and Stephen as prisoners to Chen and the Daleks who handed them over to the Doctor in return of Titanium. Having stolen the monk's defensional unit they went after the Daleks to reclaim the titanium. We know the monks. We know the monks. We also know the headless monks, but that's not the point. A lot of these are audios, but you have to remember that all incarnations of the Doctor have actually fought the Sontarans. Death. Returning to Cabell, the Doctor stole the time destructor and planned to detonate it to finally stop the Daleks. He ordered his companions back to the TARDIS for their own protection, but Sarah, unaware of the natural nature of the clan, but concerned that it might fail, followed him and was caught in its field. Whilst the Doctor was able to survive due to his be being a Time Lord, Sarah rapidly aged and died, crumbling into dust as the Doctor and Stephen watched. There's nothing they could have done. Because Sarah was actually one of the first Doctor Who companions to die. She was the first Doctor Who companion of all time to die and then following Adric a while later. 
Undated defense. A photo exists in the Unit Black Archive showing Sarah Kingdom standing next to the Unit Captain Mike Yates, who was primary associate with the Third Doctor. At some point, Sarah was abducted by Adam Mitchell as part of his plan to get revenge on the Doctor in, in collaboration with the Master. She was placed in status alongside the Doctor's multiple other companions before being released by the Doctor's first 11th number incarnations with the help of Fronto. Legacy Sarah's death, an addition of Brett and Katerina's, caused Stephen to confront the Doctor about violence that seemed to follow him, and after Anne Chapman's death, he also left the TARDIS. To her family and the Space Security Service, Sarah's death remained a mystery. Inspired by her aunt, Sarah's niece, Annie Kingdom, who also joined the, the, the Space Security Service, she became a companion of the Fourth Doctor and the Tenth Doctor. The loss... The loss eventually revealed to Anne that Sarah had killed her uncle Brett and the Doctor had been involved in both their deaths. In his seventh incarnation on the, ru on the ruined planet Architez, the Doctor thought that he'd found Sarah amongst others of his companions alive again and desperate to leave the TARDIS, he learnt that one of the race shapeshifters, Grenfren, had used his sentiment in order to manipulate him into helping it escape to a dead world. Later, while one on how like world composed the seven doctor's mind, Ace met a lingering ghost like incarnation of Sarah along with companions of who have died because of him. Ace did not recognise her. On the Space Security Service Station Seven, the eleventh doctor told Trenton that he had worked with Sarah and Brett promoting the station commander to comment that he had impressive credentials and must have st started fighting the Daleks at a very young age. Reincarnation. The copy of Sarah's mind left behind in the house in Ely lived on in the age of Earth's history in which advanced technology had become almost non-existent. Telling stories to visitors and gathering wishes where she met Robert, she granted his wish to save the life of his daughter in return for him staying in the house for life. His daughter joined them. Eventually Robert's daughter left to explore the world and Robert took Sarah's place as the... <sighs> Sorry. As entirety inhabitant of the house, Given Sarah's human form as an older woman, she attempted to leave Ely but was unable to, telling Robert one last story about how she had destroyed the great clock in exchange for the meaning to leave. Robert drew the TARDIS to the house and gave Sarah the choice of joining the Doctor in a later incarnation or remaining Earth. The vision of Sarah was abducted by Brewster using a time scoop and was taken to an alternative version of the Death Zone on Gallifrey, where she met the Fifth Doctor... Ian Chesterton, Polly Wright and Nyssa. She was reunited with, with an older Stephen. She was once again battled both the Daleks and the Sontarans. And there we go. That's everything you need to know on Sarah Kingdom. It's a pity that her story has a gruesome end. But she was the first Doctor Who companion to die. And then after that, couple, and then after that, you had Adric die, and it now seems to be a, it now seems to be a pattern. Companions just die. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did, and make sure you give it a big subscribe button down below if you've never seen my face on your screens before. And I'll see you guys next time for another Doctor Who video. Alonzi.